Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we will talk about what is mean by entry and exit criteria in software testing. Okay. And how to define this. Okay. I mean, basically how to define this entry and exit criteria in software testing. Okay. So let me quickly switch over to my screen and let's try to understand. Okay. So if I say entry and exit criteria. Okay. So... Mm -hmm. These are basically set of conditions, okay, that must be met before testing, okay, and after testing, okay. So basically, when I say before testing, it means entry criteria, okay. Okay, and when I say, sorry, yeah, when I say, uh, yeah, when I say after testing, it means it's an exit criteria. Okay, so it means there are some set of conditions which needs to be followed, okay, which needs to be set, okay. Then only you can say, okay, this is my entry criteria and this is my exit criteria. Entry before testing, exit after testing. So the conditions will be applied to start the testing and to end the testing. Okay. So when I say before, it means to start the testing, there are some conditions. And when I say after, it means to end the testing. Right. When you say, okay, it's done. Right. The testing is done. Right. So that is called exit criteria. Okay after the testing. So let's, let's talk about this, like what all we have as an entry and exit criteria. Okay. So first of all, we'll talk about entry criteria. For, I, I hope you guys got it right. What entry criteria is like, first of all. Okay. So, so the first thing is the requirement. See, all requirement should be clear to you guys. If you have any doubt, you can raise your voice. Okay, the requirement should be clear, requirement should be approved, and there is a proper plan to develop it, okay, within that defined scope. Second, test plan. Okay, so your test plan should be ready, okay, before starting your testing, and it should be approved as well with the stakeholders okay that means you are good okay so yeah okay so it should be approved with the stakeholders as well now the third thing is environment believe me guys most of the time you will see this challenge right you let not get your testing environment set up on the time right so the test environment should be ready okay if it is ready you're good next four test the data you are going to test an application you should be knowing the data if you don't have you should get the data from someone okay so data should be prepared or available. If you don't know the data, if you don't have the data, you should speak up. Okay. Then the test scripts or the test cases, it should be developed or created, whatever it is. Okay. Right? And the sixth thing is the resources. Okay, you should have all the resources. You are going to do performance testing and you don't have the performance resource. You are going to do stress testing and you don't have a person who can do stress testing. If you are going to do automation testing, you should have automation resources, right? So all resources should be present. And here I was talking about the men, right? Or maybe maybe the, uh, the test resource. But you can think it in a different way as well. Let's say, when I say that resources, the test resources, it mean it could be like the hardware as well. Maybe you don't have the proper VM to test it. Okay. Maybe you don't have some 
uh, information which is required to configure your resources, right? So there could be multiple things, right? But the resources means whatever things you need should be already be present, okay? And you are good to go, okay? The seventh is the most important one, scope. The scope should be finalized. As I said, requirement, right? The scope should also be finalized. Like, are we going to do performance testing or not? Are we going to do stress testing or not? If you are going to do performance testing, what could be the load type? If you are going to do performance testing, what are the uh, KPIs we are going to follow? up? If you are going to do automation testing, how much automation we will be doing? If you are going to automation testing, what exactly we will be automating? If you are going to do manual testing, what all artifacts we will be giving them, right? So the scope, the documentation, okay, the test work should be clear, okay? So these are all called entry criteria. If you are if you are clear with all these things, if you have all the required resources, then you are good to start your testing, okay? But when you say your testing is finished, that's where we say after testing, exit criteria. When we say our testing is finished, right? So the first thing is test coverage. All test cases are executed. And pass. There is no test case which is failed. It means your testing is done, right? Defects. No defect should be in open state. Or I will say, none of the defects should be open or active or resolved, right? All defects are closed, you can say. Okay. The next thing is acceptance criteria. Okay. So if you are, as I said, right, you have all these things ready. Like, let's say, if you're doing performance, performance is done. If you're doing saying, uh, we will be automating P1 test cases, then automation is done, right? So your acceptance criteria. is met okay okay the performance requirement should be met okay and the last thing is sign -in. so it means stakeholder or maybe the customer or maybe the manager okay should sign up on the testing process and approve the release or users do. So it means your testing is done, right? So these are the important things which you need to capture, okay? And this is what test criteria and test uh, entry criteria and exit criteria stands for, okay? So I hope this video will give you some insights of entry and exit criteria. Thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.